Hello booktube, it's me, Peace Love Books, here, and I've got sort of like a video book discussion uh, type thing coming on here. So as you can probably tell by the title, uh, the topic I want to talk about today is Brave New World versus 1984. So mainly the question I want to address is, will we be the perpetrators of our own demise? Or will that position be held by someone else? This video must tell. Can you tell I've been reading <laughs> David Copperfield? Okay. Here be spoilers! So, in case you didn't know, these are both I got notes, that's why I'm looking down. So these are both dystopian classics written kind of around the same time. So Brave New World was written first in 1932 by Aldous Huxley and George Orwell wrote 1984 in 1948 because years were switched. I had the wonderful opportunity in high school actually to study these books side by side for two different courses. Um, so I read them both at the same time and was very enthralled with this whole new genre that I hadn't discovered before. Um, and I've been thinking ever since about how they've impacted, I guess, our world today. So Brave New World follows an ensemble of characters as they maneuver through a world where people are literally manufactured to consume as much material objects and pleasure as is possible. In the book, it's normal to be polyamorous, to take a drug called Soma, to just forget about all your emotions, um, to be divided into different casts, and spend all of your free time pursuing pleasure. So basically, Huxley proposed we would pleasure ourselves into submission. We'd be too distracted by what we found pleasurable to notice or even care what we were uh, now, that we were now being, in fact, controlled by a totalitarian government. Um, I use the word pleasure a lot because that's really like one of the main themes in the book. Um, so it's in our distractions that we forget what makes us uh, human. Like we no longer uh, want to feel pain, we no longer want families, we no longer um, want to read or be educated. We, you know, when we no longer want these things, we lose all the positive aspects of them as, as well as the negative. So while pursuing nothing but physical pleasure, we are no longer feeling love of friendship or, as us on booktube know, the pleasure of a good book. So basically what Huxley proposed was that we would be the means of our un own destruction. We would pave the way for a totalitarian government and we would, as Neil Postman uh, put it, amuse ourselves to death. in 1984, which I see a lot of people actually have read and actually really enjoyed, but I'll give a basic summary just in case. We follow Winston Smith as he slowly uncovers the totalitarian government he's forced to live under. Uh, we discover with Winston that the government is using media and surveillance, thought control, and basically any other means necessary to ensure that the population is under control. Um, what we have here is a government that deprives um, its population from information to keep them scared and oppressed. So the difference between them are obvious. Uh, Huxley proposes that we are the tool of our own demise and Orwell argues that the government is responsible. I'm going to... It, it's basic. That's basic. I mean you could go into totally in-depth discussion about this but I'm not. So I'm going to just read this comic uh, it was drawn by Stuart McMillan, based on a lecture given by Neil Postman, and I'll post the comic down, down below so you can see the beautiful pictures as well. So, excuse me while I read this. <laughs> what Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who would want to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information, and Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egotism. Orwell feared the truth would be concealed from us, 
and Huxley feared the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Orwell feared we would become a captive culture, and Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture preoccupied with some equipment of, equivalent sorry, of the feelies, the orgy-porgy, and the centrifugal bumble puppy. As Huxley remarked in Brave New World Revisited, the civil libertarians and rationalists who are ever on the alert to oppose tyranny fail to take into account man's almost infinite appetite for distractions. In 1984, people are controlled by inflicting pain. In Brave New World, people are controlled by inflicting pleasure. In short, Orwell feared that what we hate will ruin us. Huxley feared that what we love will ruin us. So, what do I think? I just want to preface this statement uh, by saying that I am talking about Western civilization. I am aware of totalitarian governments in the Middle East, in the Eastern governments, especially in North Korea, and how they use a lot of Orwellian measures. But in the society that I live in, uh, I don't think it's necessary for the government to have to fight to take over our lives. Um, I think we'll pave the way for them if this is if this is our future. Um, I don't want to seem like I'm preaching or superior, um, but I do see a lot of society not caring about the world, about politics, about educating themselves, about reading, and so many more people are apathetic about these these issues. They just can't be bothered. They seem more concerned with celebrities and inane TV shows and movies, etc., etc. Now, I am readily going to admit that I love bad TV. I follow gossip, but I don't do this in exclusion to keeping abreast of politics and world issues. Um, and definitely not in exclusion to educating myself. I think our apathy and our pursuit of distraction and pleasure is what's most likely going to allow a totalitarian government the opportunity to implement what Orwell lays out. So it's kind of, I kind of believe like the, there's a mixture of, of both because obviously not everyone feels this way, right? Um, but I sincerely, sincerely hope <laughs> that we don't fall into either one of these societies. I think that people often uh, find it easier to claim that Orwell is more relevant um, because it takes the cause and, and the burden off of them and places it onto... Sorry. I think that people often claim that Orwell is um, more relevant today because, unfortunately, it takes the cause and it takes the burden off of them and it places them onto something that external, something that they feel they can't fight against um, and that they're not responsible for. Another part of this apathy I see. Um, so I think this is a very dangerous way to, to think that, it you know, it, it seems easier to notice, you know, the various cameras we have around us to, to know about the NSA and, and the propaganda and, you know, it's easier to do that than to reflect internally and think, what, what am I doing, right? I would never believe someone who says that they that they do not pursue anything just because it's pleasurable. Because um, we all do, but I think we, we should reflect internally and say, and notice that, you know, okay, I'm, I'm doing this just because I get pleasure from it. Um, but I also do this and that, and I'm aware that I, I do this. I'm just going to read this quote by Isaac Asimov that I think is relevant here. Science fiction is the only form of literature that consistently considers the nature of the change that faces us, the possible consequences, and the possible solutions. Okay, so I talked about the kind of politics here, but also since this is a blog about books, I do feel like I also want to call it odd writing styles. Huxley, I love, I love this, <laughs> this man, really. He definitely was much more experimental um, in his fiction than Orwell, and it, I think it really pays off, especially in a book about a dystopian future. 
So one of my favorite chapters in any book is actually the third chapter of Brave New World. I have my really beat up edition here that I've kind of fixed up. But in this chapter, we're jumping from scene to scene. You see all the, the little page breaks. And it gets shorter and shorter until we're at the point where it's basically, you can't really tell that, but all these spaces are page breaks. So every sentence is from a different scene. Um, and it's really disorientating. And I think that's what this book is, is like from the start. I mean, you're, you are thrown into this world and you really feel like you're a part of the world. Um, like you're the savage, the one of the characters in the book, like, or some other newcomer into this world and you're trying to consume as much as, as possible. You know, Huxley's throwing all this stuff at you. Um, and I even find both Orwell and Huxley invented a lot of words. Um, but I think Huxley's invented words also really add to the book. Um, you know, he's not afraid to use words like centrifugal bumble puppy and orgy porgy. And, and they flow well with, within the text. Um, you know, because you get that sort of, you know, it's fun to say centrif centrifugal bubble puppy. It just, it's just one of those fun words. Um, but now don't get me wrong, I love, I love Orwell as well. But I really think that Huxley takes that extra step in his, in his writing style. So, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Do you feel that Orwell's future is more imminent than Huxley's or vice versa? Um why you haven't read Brave New World yet or 1984? <laughs> What's preventing you from reading these wonderful books uh, that I think everyone should read? Uh, so that's it. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> My mustache is falling off.